Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. Um, I was rummaging through some astrophotography gear the other day and I came across the telescope that really kick-started my interest in astrophotography. It's one I haven't used for about four years so it's been sitting there languishing and unloved and I thought it'd be a good idea just to give it a little go tonight um, just to show you that you don't have to spend a fortune to get started. This telescope was a refractor and the optical tube cost me about £100 in those days. I think now I've spotted it for £109.99 on Amazon. So um, yeah, if you want to see what sort of results you get with very much entry level kit to get yourself started in astrophotography, then uh, I hope you'll join me this evening. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there but in the meantime let's crack on with this video. Well darkness is beginning to fall now folks so um, I shall be popping outside in a minute to see how the clouds are getting on. Um, this is the scope I'm intending to use tonight. It's the Orion Short Tube 80 refractor telescope uh, which as I say I bought maybe five years ago something like that um, for around a hundred pound and I bought it because I've been trying to use a 127 millimeter Mac telescope to do some astrophotography with no success and then I realized that you needed a short focal length refractor and uh, this telescope here is 400 millimeter focal length um, lots of reviews on it at the time suggesting that you got uh, blue fringing around stars, chromatic aberration, uh, which indeed you do, but I was just keen to get some photographs of the uh, of the night sky. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd show people today what this little scope really is capable of doing astrophotography wise and whether I can get rid of the blue fringing uh, in post-processing. I'm going to be using the scope with a Canon DSLR, an unmodified one, just my normal day-to-day -day usage Canon 1300D, so fairly basic spec, and I'm going to put it on an Altaz mount to replicate the sort of astrophotography that I was doing um, when I started out. So yeah, this scope now costs, as of today, £109.99 on Amazon, it seems to be around the £130 mark typically. It hasn't been available for a few years. It sort of dropped out the uh, frame shortly after I bought it, but I think it's been reintroduced into the UK again uh, in the last year or so. There is an equivalent Skywatcher scope. I think it's called the Skywatcher Star Travel, I think, or Star Travel 80. Um, the spec appears to be pretty much identical and that's around the £120 mark as well. So uh, yeah I'm going to pop outside have a look see where the clouds are going in a moment. We were going to have about a four hour clear spell tonight but um, it now looks like it's going to be more like an hour to an hour and a half. Another reason for using an Altaz mount dead fast to set up although my exposure times are going to be extremely limited. I'm um, looking at maybe doing 10 second exposures, something like that. But um, anyhow, let's, uh, let's get cracking, let's get outside and uh, yeah, I'll bring you back a bit later on. Can't be without you. 
falling without you I've been hoping for a new melody Just to get me some kind of remedy Okay, that's this evening's session done. Um, my target that I picked tonight was the Perseus double cluster. Uh, I wanted to do a star cluster. In fact, ideally I wanted to do the Pleiades, but the Pleiades wasn't going to be available above my roof until later on, by which time it clouded over. Um, so the Perseus double cluster was uh, nicely sitting there at about half past five, six o'clock. So that's what I went for. I wanted to do a star cluster really to give the telescope a fairly hard job as regards fringing around the stars. Um, so yeah, I'm pleased to say I've managed to get a stack of shots on the Perseus double cluster that I'll process tomorrow. There was fringing around the stars a particularly noticeable on the star that I was using as one of my alignment and focusing stars which was Navi in Cassiopeia. Uh, this is a really bright star so I'm not surprised to see the fringe in. Um, yeah so I'm done now. I'm gonna process the pictures. I only managed to get exposures of about um, seven seconds, eight seconds for each one it was fairly windy outside anything longer than that I found I was just losing too many frames so I've gone for that uh, so yeah very basic astrophotography I just want to see what we can get out of it so I'll process the picture and I'll bring you back tomorrow so uh, yeah good night from me hello folks good afternoon I've had the chance to look at my pictures from yesterday and do some processing and overall I'm quite pleased with the result uh, I got about an hour's cloud-free window in the end yesterday. It wasn't as good as the weather forecast had suggested, um, but that was enough for me to get, I had about 145 exposures. I only took seven second exposures because the, uh, the wind, it was a little bit blowy, and I found when I was taking longer, and I would normally expect to get 10, 15 second exposures with the setup that I had, I was just losing too many uh, through star trailing, through the mountain wobbling and such like. Um, but nonetheless, you know, I ended up with 140 odd seven second exposures that I stacked up and uh, <clears throat> produced what I think is a, a reasonable result considering the very budget level quality of the scope that I was using. Um, initially, I was looking visually through the telescope and uh, yeah, it's really, it is re actually really nice visually. Um, then I did my focusing using Navi as my focusing star for when I put my camera on. Took a exposure of that and Navi's quite a bright star so as expected I ended up with uh, quite a lot of blue fringing around the star, chromatic aberration. And that's what I'd expect for an achromatic telescope like the Orion Short Tube 80. I then slewed to my target, the Perseus double cluster, and took some test exposures of that. And again, as expected in the single exposures, I could see a little bit of uh, blue fringing on the stars. And when I'd stacked all the results together and removed the light pollution using the levels control in Photoshop, uh, you could see blue fringing on a lot of the brighter stars in the cluster. However, my processing skills are quite a lot better than they were when I originally was using the Orion Short Tube 80 telescope and there's a, a, a function in the Adobe Camera Raw filter in Photoshop that enables you to get rid of like blue purpley fringing around the stars. So uh, when I did my processing on it I, I lost a lot of the fringing that is present when you take pictures with this telescope. Um, so yeah, I, I think it is possible to eliminate a lot of the problems that are caused by this kind of telescope at the, the cheaper end of the market uh, in, in post-processing. So that was, uh, that was quite pleasing for me. 
I'll put the final picture up in a minute. I'm quite pleased with it, considering I was using Altaz mount, seven second exposures and a very budget telescope. And I'd picked a star cluster, which is probably one of the worst targets that you can pick for this type of, uh, of, of telescope. So yeah, I'll put that up in a tick. So yeah, for currently £109.99, I'll probably do a little review of this telescope and let you know, look at it in a bit more detail and show you some of its features because for people who are maybe starting off in astrophotography and not sure whether they want to get involved in it or not, this is quite a cheap way of finding out whether you like it. So uh, probably a couple of weeks after this video, I'll put one up on the telescope itself. Um, but in the meantime, I'll show you the picture that I took yesterday and I'll say cheerio. See you next time.